Now take a look at these two brains. They look identical, right? They're the same size, have roughly the same number of brain cells and the same number of connections between regions. But one is smarter than the other. So why? Well, the answer might be in those connections. So we used to think that bigger brains were better or that each part of the brain just had one job. But now we're learning that almost everything the brain does relies on a pattern of communication. And this new way of thinking about your brain has some weird similarities with the game Twister. So I took my sock and feet game in search for an expert in this new way of thinking about thinking. This big picture perspective of how your brain works is called network neuroscience. Researchers use images of your brain, like from a brain scanner, to make a map of the major connections among your brain regions. Those regions become nodes in the network with connections or edges between them, like stations in a network of train tracks. This wiring of your brain network has different patterns that shift all the time when you learn or when you multitask. And a new theory suggests that how this wiring shifts in response to intellectual tasks is the best predictor of intelligence. I am Danielle Bassett. I am an associate professor of bioengineering here at the University of Pennsylvania, and I'm a MacArthur Fellow. So to detangle this network approach, I came to UPenn to meet Danielle. She analyzes how these brain networks respond to you doing certain activities, like learning something new. Somebody learns by changing the pattern of connections inside of the brain. Um, and those pattern of connections tells you which parts of the brain are communicating with one another. Um, so what's happening as we're learning is that different parts of the brain are communicating in ways that they didn't before. And this is where Twister comes in. Um, right foot right on foot. yellow. <laughs> there we go. The structure of the game is a simplified way to think of these networks in your brain. It's like a network in your brain because um, different parts of your brain are like us. So I'm a part of the brain, you're a part of the brain. You're making three connections to two blue areas and one yellow area, and I'm making two connections to two uh, red areas. As we um, play the game, we're going to change the connections. And as a person learns, these connections between brain regions can change. They can connect and split apart and connect again. So this pattern may be illustrative of the connectivity at one particular point in time, um, but then it would reconfigure. To form new connections. It would reconfigure, and it would reconfigure, and it would reconfigure, and it would reconfigure over time as people are learning. And a measure of this reconfiguring is called cognitive flexibility. It's a capacity to change from one task to another task. It can indicate how smart you are. The quicker your brain configures and reconfigures its connectivity in response to the changing needs of a task, the better it works. The better you are at learning new things, multitasking or switching between tasks, and possibly higher intelligence. Recent research suggests that general intelligence depends on this dynamic reconfiguration of your main networks. But like most research about intelligence, it raises even more questions. I think there's a lot of components to intelligence um, and that cognitive flexibility is certainly one that we associate with intelligence, but I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't say that it necessarily constitutes you know, it certainly doesn't explain 100% of what intelligence actually is. But what we can say is that cognitive flexibility is amazing. So is there a way to make my brain more flexible? So I can be a super fast learner or a super multitasker, a super tasker. How can I reconfigure my brain? to be the best learner possible. So what we know so far is that people who are very good learners have very changeable networks. So their patterns of connectivity change um, very quickly. Um, that changeability of the network is related to how positive somebody feels on a particular day. Um, really? So even a positive mood. Um, and the degree to which they have um, slept well the night before and um, had breakfast and, and wow. feel. So if I sleep well, yes. 
if I am happier, so to speak, yes. if I'm in a positive mood. You will have a more changeable brain network pattern of connections. And other researchers suggest that exercise can boost our cognitive flexibility too. These seem like pretty simple takeaways, but remember that they've come from analyzing a huge and super complicated map of the human brain. So I think what we're doing in neuroscience is trying to say it's not just about single brain regions, it's not just about single connections, it's about, it's about the whole pattern which is admitting a high level of complexity. Um, but from that we can gain very simple intuitions about what makes a brain network healthy and then what makes it altered in disease. And reconfiguring patterns in your brain it takes energy, lots of it. Certain patterns are hard to achieve, just like how certain configurations are harder for human bodies to bend and twist into. So a lot of times we fall back on configuration patterns that take the least energy. Breaking out of those patterns is often the first step in changing the way you think and it can even help unleash your creativity. Thankfully for me, this kind of neural acrobatics is not correlated with my body's flexibility. Right hand on your blue. Right hand on blue. Great. Wait, is that your right? That is your right hand. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why you're a professor and I'm not. <laughs>